Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Authentic Info Podcast. I'm your host, Admar Sandile Chawuk. Over the weekend, we lost Mangoso to Buteles at age 95. And I've seen the Zulu nation mourning his death. So now, my problem now is a lot of content creators, a lot of political analysts and political commentators, and some politicians are starting to speak ill about him and trying to bring back, you know, videos of history of what really uh, IFP used to do and telling us all the secrets. But these are the people who have been doing this by the time he was still alive. These are the people who have been served with him in parliament. So to see them now speaking ill about him now, now that he's no more, I think it's a um, cowardice move and to score cheap political points. Uh, as black people, we were taught to respect the dead and not to speak ill about them which means this, uh, I mean, elders have seen and created an opportunity for people to be took head on while they are still alive and told of their problem or, 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 or to, for people to, to, to give their positions, you know, upon certain individuals' actions while that person is still alive and not to speak ill about them while they are dead. So I see a lot of South Africans trying to, or bringing back, you know, the memories of the contributions that they say uh, IFP have done, you know, in terms of brutality, in, in terms of killing black people on, on, on trains, yeah, especially in, in, in some parts of Johannesburg, saying that uh, he, I mean, uh, the IFP leader, Mangosutu Butelezi, was funded by the South African government, which was uh, led by white people, the apartheid uh, regime, to terrorize and to look like he is uh, fighting for freedom while taking no action about it. So I've seen even uh, uh, a, a speech which was given, I think it was in 1991 by Chris Hani, lambasting the actions of the IFP. So Chris Hani was a leader. Chris Hani was not a coward because he spoke uh, about these uh, bad things that were done by the IFP while both of them were alive. So which means he took Mangosu to Butelis while he was still strong. He took him head on. But we see leaders now, 30 years later, trying to teach us about the history and the contributions of the IFP and trying to fight uh, the resistance, but giving an impression that they are the right ones to lead South Africa. We know about this history, but I think a lot of us have been cowards to speak about it while you are still alive. Why? I've heard a lot of people on radio saying that uh, their relatives were killed their parents were killed. I'm not saying that we shouldn't, uh, I mean, it's not a crime which was committed by him. But what is it that they did while he was still alive? Why were they so scared of him? What is it that they've done to try to hold him to account? I mean, a lot of them served with him in parliament. For the longest time that he has been there, I think he has served, uh, I think, uh, in five administrations, if I'm not wrong. And he has been there with them but they did nothing to him. Now now that today is dead, today is normal, uh, they are coming back to uh, produce memories, video clips, voice recordings, and, and writings to show us uh, what uh, the, the Inkata was capable of. We know uh, what Inkata was capable of, and why was the man not taken head on? Why didn't these writers and political commentators and political analysts didn't take uh, uh, him head on? Maybe on his birthday or on the date that when they, where they celebrate the founding of IFP to try and write about the contributions of the I, IFP, which was very brutal and in fighting a lot of uh, people in, in, in some parts of Gauti. They should have written about that while the man was still alive. But now today is no more. He cannot answer for himself. He cannot account for himself. We see a lot of clever blacks uh, writing, you know, using their fancy English, writing so negative about him. I saw someone even uh, giving comments that he must rest in peace if he wants to. After writing uh, long notes or information about all uh, the illegalities uh, which were committed by the IFP led by uh, 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 Putelis. 
but brutality is normal. Who are we going to hold to account for that uh, uh, brutality? Because it is normal. Information is there, it has long been there, that he receives uh, uh, firearms and ammunition from the, the apartheid. He received uh, that uh, firearm and ammunition from the apartheid regime. He was funded by them. He was a prime minister and he had mini uh, ministers uh, uh, under him who were funded by uh, the apartheid government, who were getting salaries from the apartheid government. Uh, but no one took him uh, to account while he was still alive. We know all those things. And we decided to keep quiet and wait for him to die so that we can uh, bring these things up. I think it's, it's some cowardice move. I don't see any leadership in people who are trying to speak bad about him now that he is normal. He is normal. Even uh, by the time he was on his 70s and 90s, no one even tried to speak bad about him or to take him head on, to make him account for all those wrongdoings. So if we speak, uh, we, tr we come to speak now, who do we want uh, to, take the, to, to put the blame on? His children, his colleagues in the IFP? Because these people were, were not there. Majority of them were not there while these things were, were happening. Majority of them in the 90s, they were not there in the uh, late 80s when uh, Butele was, was terrorizing South Africans, black people, even uh, uh, those from the ANC, because we know that Butele comes from the ANC. It is known. So the ANC did not hold him to account. Why? So today, now that it's normal, some uh, leaders want to come and speak and try to, to, to bring back memories so that we can hate him when he is dead. I think it's wrong. And this is the type of leadership that we have in South Africa. That when you are, you are a high-profile politician, you are untouchable. But the day you lose power, or the day you die, now the scandals will come up. So this is the type of leadership that we have in South Africa. No one will ever account, for as long as they are politically connected, for as long as that person, him or herself, uh, holds a high profile or, or, or high rank in, in politics. There's no way that that person will account. But the, those who want to try and, 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 and do good or to expose these things are the ones who uh, these in the institutions which are independent, these institutions will be used against those people to try to block them to speak the truth. And now... Uh, when, when, when the person who some people wanted to hold to account is no more, now the, the people who resisted, who blocked these people to speak, will be the one who speaks first. So it's bad. I mean, as South Africans, I don't know how we are living or how we want to be governed. Because this government is about us and all these laws that are here are here to govern us. And if we become cowards like everyone else, I don't think uh, South Africa will have a bright future. Because holding a leader to account by the time he's alive, I think uh, it is the, the most productive thing to do. Because this, we get to hear uh, the other version coming from this person that we are accusing of these heinous crimes. But if we wait for them to die, if we wait for them to be older, because a person who's aged 95, when they tell you that they don't remember what happened 30 years ago, what, what do you want to say? The person is old. And when those things happened, they were in their 60s. They were still old. So let us let Mangosu to Butele's rest in peace. Not if you want to. He must just rest in peace like any other leader. He is not the first Zulu person uh, to kill a lot of black people in South Africa. He is not. Unfortunately, I don't think he holds a record of killing white people trying to fight the apartheid. That is why the likes of Bokris Hani exposed him for who he is in the early 90s, saying that he, he is seen as a resistant movement or leading a resistant movement, but getting salaries from the 
the, the, from, from, from the very same system that he is trying, is faking to be holding to account. That is why uh, they accused him of being a spy and a CIA agent on all sorts of things because they saw him for who he is. They exposed him while they were still alive. But 30 years later, after democracy, we have cowardice politicians and leaders, political analysts who are very biased, biased, political commentators who are very who are cowards, coming now to write and say he was a mass murderer, he was very brutal on black people, but he is no more. He is no longer here to account. That is my worry. So the man is dead. The man is dead. He must be led to rest in peace. Because one thing that happens is that uh, all the people who we hate, they have people who love them. And when we speak ill about them, when they are normal, we must care and understand that there are those who are going through pain by that moment. By the time we, see, we have an opportunity to speak ill about them because we are cowards not to speak while they were still alive. We are not hating that person. We are hating those who, who are feeling pain because of that person's death or passing. That is why elders teaches us not to speak ill about the dead because they are no longer there to account. Even a criminal, when a criminal is dead, we cannot speak ill about that, that person. Because that person, my father, that person has kids, children. That person has relatives, wife, parents, and things like that. These people loved this person and they so wished that this person could change. But the time the person passes and we come to speak ill about them, we don't hurt the person who died, but we hurt the, one, the ones who are alive, the family of that person. So a lot of us were cowards to speak about uh, 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 Buteles while we were still alive. To interview him as to what is it that led to him uh, organizing people to, terror to terrorize those who were fighting against the apartheid. We did not ask those questions to the old man. But now that he's dead, we are reviving memories and we are hating the ones who are alive. Because even those families who, uh, who lost their loved ones because of the terror or the regime of the IFP back then, now that we are reviving those memories, we are bringing only pain. And the people who passed and the one who caused, accused of causing that they are no more. We are just hating their families because of these speech, uh, speeches that we are writing, uh, lambasting on the life and times and legacy of Mangosutu Buteles. These content creators who want to attract views, who want to gain new subscribers and followers, because of writing reckless statements. They are hating the people who loved uh, 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 the IFP leader, uh, Butelis. Because we must understand that after, I mean, in democracy, he was a changed man. And those who served with him in parliament are saying that he was the most calm individual to work with and was always advising them based on experience, which means he changed. He later changed. But those who felt like he had to account, those who are writing this piece of, of, of information and reviving memories, these are the people who were cowards. These are the people who failed to approach him while he was still alive. To take him head on like Chris Annie did in the early 90s. To expose the IFP 
for what it were back then. Not to speak ill about uh, Mangosotu when he is no more 30 years later into democracy. So we need the leaders who will take each other to account while they are working. We don't need leaders who will go under the table when, they are, when uh, their opponents are wrong because they know that they also have uh, their own shenanigans that they don't want to be exposed. And they wait for their opponent to die so that they can expose their wrongdoings. Because that is tolerating crime. That is to tolerate the wrongdoings of other politicians and leaders. And that is not what we want as South Africans or as black people in Africa. We want a leader who is transparent, a leader who is accountable, so that we know who is leading us. And if there are some uh, information that needs to be exposed, we need other leaders to expose that information, such information, so that it is known, so that the person accounts, and we know that this person is transparent. Not to wait for them to die, and then we bring memories that on this day, this is what is done. On this, we are not supposed to mourn this person because he has killed a lot of people. But there are channels and procedures that are there in law to hold to account people who committed crimes. But unfortunately, no one who is writing negative about Mangosutu Butelezi tried to use all of those uh, channels to hold him into account, to, to account. So I think we are being cowards as black South Africans uh, and those content creators who are writing these attractive uh, topics so that we can uh, go and listen to their story when they speak bad about uh, a person who's not yet been buried, by the way. So that is being reckless as a black person, especially as, as, as a black content creator. To write so ill about person, a person who their, their family is still mourning, who their family is still preparing for the, and planning for their funeral, for their final send-off. This is Authentic Info Podcast. I'm your host, Admar Sandel Chau. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. The comment section is open. I answer all the, 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 I answer all the comments. And please like, uh, press the notification bell. Let's grow together. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.